Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, Dan Shields here. Uh, hey, today I'm going to go through some ideas that are, I think, really good ideas. Uh, if you're an improvising musician and you're trying to learn uh, some things, especially your arpeggio shapes, and how to get like around the arpeggio shapes. Now, just to know, this is uh, these are ideas that are based out of my book series, uh, The Guitar Daily Workout. Uh, so you can find out more about that below. But um, basically, it's like a, an exercise program for guitar. And in System 9, which is like the ninth book, uh, it gets into the very advanced concepts. Uh, so 1 through 4 are pretty, you know, core concepts. And 5 through 8 are like uh, intermediate concepts. And then 9 through 12 are really advanced concepts. So, you know, this might not be for you if you're, uh, if you're somebody who's just, uh, you know, um, knows what you're doing but doesn't want to get into the really advanced stuff but this is a pretty cool idea actually that, uh, that you might get something from you might understand some music theory from this and you understand a little bit more of how the fretboard works so typically when you're playing if uh if you're playing let's say you're playing over some changes like um let's say you're doing like uh, f minor seven b flat minor seven e seven Uh, let, let's just do that much so so that, that would be considered three six or sorry six two five and one if we're doing if you know that uh, Nashville number system all right now normally if you're doing that you're gonna start off let's say we're playing this F minor 7 chord here and if you're playing arpeggios now arpeggios are just the chord uh, the chords broken up into individual notes um, so they're always if you're doing seventh arpeggios it's always the root the third, the fifth, and the seventh, and then whether it's a major, minor, perfect, or uh, flatted or augmented, makes it what you know whether it's a minor seventh quarter, major seventh quarter, a half diminished quarter, whatever. So it gives it the chord qualities. So normally, if you're playing these things, uh, you know if I was playing over these uh, changes, I might be playing like these sort of arpeggios. So over top of this chord, and again that's. Um, root third fifth seventh and then root third fifth seventh again B flat minor E7 A flat seven major seven uh, D flat major seven if I was doing all the changes okay so those are sort of the changes that how you might approach some of those changes. And then what you do is you use these notes. Um, so you can hear when I'm playing, I sound sort of melodic because I'm playing through the chord changes, uh, not just wandering on some sort of like, you know, random, uh, scale or something like that. Okay, so you get the idea on this. Well, let me show you a new concept that you, you may have come across before a little bit, but it's really a useful one to try to get you through the chord changes. And what this is, is using a pattern that only uses two string sets. It's going to be four notes all together, and then it's going to repeat itself over and over again. So you see the same shape over and over again. So let's say we're on this uh, F minor seven. I can play this F minor seven here. Now listen to this. You can hear it's the same notes. Root, minor, third, perfect, fifth, minor, seventh. Now, the cool thing about this, you know, no big deal doing that, right? But I can take this then, and I can do it on the next string set. And then I can do the same shape on the next string set, because it's a geometric instrument. All of a sudden, I'm covering a lot of territory in a very, very easy way. And then, of course, when I do it on this B flat chord, I do the exact same thing. All right, let me talk through the concept a little bit, and uh, I think you'll really get it, and I think you'll really like this. I think this is going to be a really useful thing for you. Um, now, you know, as with all of these things, there's a lot of memorization on guitar. There's no getting around it. If you're a guitar player, there's a lot of information you have to memorize 
to be able to make stuff just to just to be able to get around on the neck and then to be melodic it takes more than that and then to be you know um, Mike Stern or something like that it takes a whole nother level of, of practice so it's a difficult thing but these are concepts that can help you right where you're at right now so whatever you're, you're able to do you'll just be able to do it a little bit better hopefully uh, by using some of these concepts all right so let me let me talk through what this thing is so we're going to start off on on this F note and I'm going to walk through all of the versions of the seventh chords now just a little bit of music theory don't tune out on this because this is important stuff um, whenever you're dealing with seventh chords, they're always the same notes. It's always root, third, fifth, and seventh. And then the quality of those things is what determines what chord it is. So for instance, if I played the root, the major third, the perfect fifth, and a major seventh, that's an F major seven chord. So you might know that version of the F major seven chord. And then again, as I said before, I can take that and go right up the neck playing the exact same pattern. So I'm stretching, you can see that um, four frets, and then up, four frets, four frets, four frets. The exact same shape each time, very convenient. Now this is where it gets really great though. So that's root, major third, perfect fifth, major seventh. A dominant seventh chord is almost the exact same, but I lower the seventh. So it's root, major third, perfect fifth, and minor seventh. Okay, so major seventh, uh, sorry, and then dominant seventh with that flatted seventh. A minor seventh chord has the minor third and minor seventh. And grab your guitar and play this. You'll, you'll be surprised. You know, on piano, it's like so easy to be able to see the chords and know what scales you're supposed to be able to play your arpeggios because they're all under your hands. On guitar, we're all spread out on these different voicings, you know, so depending on the voicings that you play of the major seventh chord. Um, so you can't really see the, the patterns that way, but when you do this, you see the pattern. So major seventh chord, dominant seventh chord. Now a minor seventh chord is root, minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh. You see where this is going. Then half diminished chord is root, minor third, diminished fifth, minor seventh. It's also called a, uh, a minor seven flat five chord. And then finally the diminished chord, root, minor third, diminished fifth, diminished seventh. Now, when I do that, then I can do this, major seven, then I can do dominant seventh. minor seven and then finally same thing on the half diminished seven and the diminished which a lot of you guys know the diminished shape now when I'm playing through changes then um, I can I'm gonna jump around a little bit here and you don't normally want to do this in your playing but if I played those same changes F minor seven I could do an F minor seven, then B flat minor seven, um, E flat dominant seventh, and then finally A flat major seven. And so if, if I'm playing and sort of like improvising a little bit, um, little um, little phrases or whatever you know if I did um, I can do that on the next string up or next string and then you know change change it for the next chord um, sorry so you see how like little phrases then all of a sudden become super important because you just transpose those those phrases um, question and answer type of stuff. So it's really useful for your playing. So um, now just to put a caveat on this, when you start into it, you know, 
I just started on the root, but you can third start on the third. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but I guess, let me try that again. I can start on the third of it, uh, and it's the exact same thing again for all of the different um, variations of it. So uh, root, third, fifth, and seventh. And then you can start to mix and match these a little bit. You know, so let's say I started off here. And then I wanted to go into um, the B flat. From the third, uh, same thing from the third if I wanted. And then finally to the, back into the root position. And that sort of smooths out the lines a little bit. And then, of course, you know, the next step on that is getting some sort of... Where you get some sort of scale ideas in there as well. And then that's the beginning of really getting some melodies going over top of these chord changes. So hopefully that's a concept that'll help you out a little bit. Uh, again, that's, uh, that's associated with System 9. Uh, my arpeggio workout on that and uh, be sure to check that out if this is something that you're interested in It'll really help to get these shapes and ideas under your fingers So until next time see ya